All right, welcome back, everyone, for more Legend of Zelda. You can see I made a little side trip to the fairy fountain to grab some hearts. Here we're introduced to snakes called ropes. I notice they they charge directly at you when they're. When they're at eye level with you. I'll try to pick them off before they do that. <laughs> Everybody walks into my sword. Now, you might notice you don't necessarily use keys in the same dungeon you, you pick them up. Hell, you might notice at the shops you can buy them there, too. Something that would be changed quite a bit in future games. Oh, yeah. You might notice there... <clears throat> sometimes... When you have groups of enemies, there will be like a, a leader that they, they don't, you can't really tell them from the others, but if you kill them, then all the enemy, other enemies will disappear also. Kind of an interesting little mechanic. Got our map. As you can see, it's mostly a straight shot with some side rooms. Okay, this room is pretty dangerous, so, uh, let me see, let's, these blue gorias are tough. Okay, thankfully that went pretty well. Clearing them out gets us the magic boomerang. Works the same as the regular boomerang, only it travels much farther. game's version of Land Molas. They're supposed to be giant worms. Okay, now some of these we can bomb through. Another, another quite uh, memeified line. Oh my God! So many snakes, so much lag. But yeah, kind of a it's kind of an obscure hint, but I think you've seen one item that looks like it gives off smoke. There's our boss, the Dongo. Be a very familiar enemy throughout the series. Um, there, as you can see, your sword doesn't work on him. There are two ways to deal with him. You can either dr either just feed him two bombs, or if I can get the timing right. Okay, if if you uh, if you hit him like just right. With the, with the blast of the bomb, it'll stun him, and that will let you kill him with your sword. 
I find the best way to do that is to feed him one bomb and then drop another right in front of him. The advantage to killing him that way is that he always drops bombs when he's killed that way, which will be very useful later in the game. Because we not only encounter him as a normal enemy in dungeons, but they appear in groups of three. So you can go through your bombs pretty quickly if you don't have a good way of dealing with them. Because as you can see, your bombs cap at eight for right now. We'll be able, we'll be able to buy a couple of upgrades to that, though. Okay, we got the money, so let's uh, let's go grab the magic shield. This will enable us to block things that we couldn't block with our regular shield, such as fireballs and some other things. From him we get a letter. We're told to show it to to an old woman. As you notice, we've already encountered an old woman who doesn't say much of anything at first. Let's play money-making game. Uh, let's not. Although you, we could probably... We could probably cheat with some, uh, some save scumming to get some, to get rupees that way. But I would rather just walk through the wall here. And get ourselves a hundred rupees right there. Probably just head right on over to the to the third dungeon now. Now our max rupee count is 255 in this game, and we do want to get it up there. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to do that pretty soon. Hopefully by the time I'm finished with the third dungeon. Okay, here's another one of those old women. So let's show her the letter. And we can now buy potions from her. Um, blue one restores your health once. Red one restores your health twice. That'll be useful later, but I don't think I need it just yet.
gonna say about the Moblins. This was back from when they were the uh, the dog-faced variant, as opposed to the the pig-faced ones we'd be seen in the later games. Anyway, here's the d entrance to Dungeon Three. These are Zoles. If uh, we can one-shot them with the white sword, but if we hit them with with the uh, if we just had the regular swords still, they would divide into two gels. Those smaller blob enemies we were fighting in the earlier dungeons. But otherwise they're not they're no threat at all. Now these guys on the other hand, these are dark nuts, and these guys can be bastards. With the white sword, they're not too big of a problem, but uh, when once we once we meet their uh, their blue brethren, on the other hand, that's when they're going to be a problem. As you can see, you can't you can't hurt them from the front. You have to. You have to get them in the side or from behind. And if they're going to drop bombs... Bombs can be pretty effective on them as well. Especially when the game decides to fill the whole frickin' screen with them. Like, case in point, enough to lag the game. That's better. Here we find the raft. That enables us to... That enables us to travel from any any little piers that we see. Those flashing skull things are bubbles. If they hit you, they won't hurt you, but you won't be able to... You can't unsheathe your sword for a few seconds. Which can be a problem. Especially later in the game. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Very generous with the rupees. I am not complaining. Sure did. Whoops! Oh shit! I didn't even mean to shit fire the sword. The sword beam. Yeah. If uh, <clears throat> if you attack those guys, you can't actually kill them, but but they'll start shooting fireballs at you. And then we gotta listen to his long-winded speech again. Ah, oh, there's our map. And I know what most people are thinking. They're thinking, oh my god, Nazi Zelda. No, not quite. Um, what that is, is, is a manji. It's, from what I understand, it's something that's been used as a, uh... Oh my god, I'm, I'm talking and I'm getting my ass kicked by the darknuts. It was like a holy symbol 
symbol of good fortune for like for a pretty long time until the Nazis kind of adapted it. And the rest is history, as, to, as they say. Okay. Here we are at the boss. That is Manhandla. That, he can be a real... Oh, God. Okay. You, you kill it by chopping off all four of its little... Uh, of its little arms there. But it gets faster with each one, so... The best way to deal with them is just set a bomb and hope that it walks over and takes them all out at once. Funnily enough, um, the Japanese manual actually refers to it as a, uh, as a giant, uh, pocken flower. Um, pocken flowers are what piranha plants are called, um, in Japan, from, uh, Super Mario Brothers. So it's kind of neat that the game would make a little, uh, just the Japanese version would make that little cross-reference to, uh, to Super Mario Brothers. Okay, we've got the, uh, we've got the rupees. Let's head on up here. Oops. Kind of pointless picking up the rupees now, because like I said, it caps at 255. Okay, we want here is the blue ring. We'll want that piece of meat eventually. But the real prize is the blue ring. And now with that, what that's done is raises our defense. So that will be extremely useful coming up. Another hundred rupees from this guy. And another ten. Now with the raft, there's... We can access the fourth dungeon. There's also a heart container I can get to. I'm not sure if... I want to go do that because the fourth the fourth dungeon can be a little a little dicey the first the first three as you saw are aren't too big of a problem especially if you did go out of your way to get the the white sword first fourth dungeon is where it starts to pick up a little bit
It's actually not that hard, though. Here we are. Alright. Then, uh... I think I'm gonna just end it here. And then I'll, I'll make my way back to, uh... Back, uh, off screen. So I'll see you guys next time we get ready to head for the fourth dungeon. I'm playing a game. <laughs>